Good morning everyone. I am Sushmita Priyadarshini. I am an audiologist from Bangalore Hearing and Implant Institute. Uh, my webinar topic is audiological management uh, of special groups in hearing loss such as unilateral hearing loss, sudden hearing loss, progressive hearing loss and fluctuating hearing loss. First we will discuss on sudden hearing loss which lasts for uh, several uh, hours to several days. So as I said, sudden hearing loss will last for several hours to a couple of days and it occurs with greater um, loss more than 30 dB and frequently seen in 30 to 60 years of age groups and it affects both male and female. So it is usually seen in unilateral and is often accompanied with uh, tinnitus and vertigo and less than 10% of individuals who have bilateral will also uh, seen with uh, tinnitus and the amount of hearing loss may vary from mild to severe and may involve different parts of the hearing frequency range. Uh, so causes are uh, such as inflammation of inner ear due to some viral infections such as labyrinthine viral infection and labyrinthine vascular compromise, intracochlear membrane rupture, uh, immune mediated inner ear disease. Uh, vascular causes, the cochlea is supplied by an end artery and vascular occlusion was postulated as a cause for sudden sensory neural hearing loss as early as 1949. Studies have investigated several possible mechanisms including atherosclerosis, hypotension, um, thrombophilia, vasospasm, hyperviscosity and paradoxical embolism. Uh, cochlear function is sensitive to changes in blood supply, vascular compromise of cochlea due to thrombosis, embolus or vas vasospasm result in uh, reduced blood supply and results in a reduction of oxygenation to cochlea. Seems to be an etiology of sudden hearing loss. Infectious diseases are uh, uh, detected such as influenza, type B, cytomegalovirus, mumps, rubella and varicella zoster and others include measles, herpes 1 and infectious mononucleosis uh, appears to be the basis for about 60% of all cases of sudden hearing loss. Intracochlear membrane rupture such as uh, Meniere's disease and perilymphatic fistula, rupture of the either membranes could produce hearing loss and the Meniere's disease is associated with excessive uh, endolymphatic production with a leak of uh, perilymph into the middle ear via the wrong window. Endolymphatic hydrops and excess of endolymph in the scala media of the labyrinth is a pathological finding that is commonly associated with Meniere's disease. It classically presents with sudden unilateral hearing loss, tinnitus and vertigo. Sudden sensory neural hearing loss is sometimes associated with systemic immune mediated diseases. Moreover, patients with this disorder can have evidence of T cell and antibi antibody recognition of inner ear antigens. Other causes are uh, such as like several de genetic diseases have been linked uh, with sudden hearing, uh, sensory neural hearing loss, trauma, autoimmune disease such as Coggins syndrome, neurological disease such as multiple sclerosis, autotoxic drugs. To diagnose sudden hearing loss, this may require urgent formal audiometric uh, and once the hearing loss is confirmed, the patient is referred for detailed audiometric testing, blood test and imaging uh, and uh, balance tests. A specific cause is identified, uh, then treatment will be based on this abnormality and if, if no cause is identified, the most common treatment for sudden hearing loss is corticosteroids. Uh, blood studies are usually performed in an attempt to rule potentially system, uh, systemic causes of sudden hearing loss including syphilis, Lyme disease, metabolic, uh, autoimmune and circu circulatory disorders. Magnetic uh, resonance imaging of the brain is recommended to rule out an uh, acoustic neuroma which is reported to be existent up to 15% of patients with sudden hearing loss. Oral corticosteroids are widely used. Steroids have many effects in the inner ear and whether uh, suppression of an immune response changes in microvascular uh, circulation, mineral uh, corticoid effects or a decrease in endolymphatic pressure are beneficial. In cases of vascular disease, a low dose uh, oral aspirin could be a benefit. 
the audiological rehabilitation comes into the picture for those with permanent hearing loss and the management includes amplification devices assistive uh, listening devices communication strategies counseling and vestibular management the amplification devices traditional hearing aids can be provided to the poorer ear if there is residual hearing present if the poorer ear fails to obtain significant benefit due to the absence of residual hearing the other options include cross it is used to treat unilateral hearing loss it pick up the sound from the poorer ear and transmit it to the better ear that is transferring sound from the uh, from the poorer to better side Uh, so the cross hearing aid consists of a hearing aid shell containing a receiver and other unit with a small microphone system the receiver unit is in behind of the normal ear uh, while the uh, mic located on the side of the deaf ear several other treatments have been investigated because of speculation about pathogenesis treatment with antiviral agents oral magnesium was associated with benefit in a small randomized controlled trial comparing treatment with steroid and magnesium treatment with carbogen uh, a gaseous uh, mixture of 5% carbon dioxide and 95% of oxygen patients with cogan syndrome have been treated with intravenous and oral uh, corticosteroids and gene therapy in case of syndromic conditions surgical interventions such as labyrinthectomy can be undertaken in treatment of meniere's disease uh, vasodilators in case of vascular diseases can be administered exploratory tympanotomy is thought to be of uh, benefit in different conditions such as for management of sudden sensory neural hearing loss occurring in the context of uh, head trauma and bar barotrauma communication strategies it is an important component of audiological uh, rehabilitation speech reading it involves watching the speaker's mouth uh, facial expressions and hand gestures as much as possible and having awareness of the topic of conversation and contextual cues uh, communication strategies address issues related to conversational techniques repair strategies assertiveness training interpersonal skills and coping uh, strategies Uh, there are two main uh, types anticipatory strategies and repair strategies which involves predicting possible problems in a situation and planning ways to deal with them uh, it include anticipatory strategies includes uh, revealing your problem selecting appropriate seating adequate lighting uh, in a room avoiding noisy environment and anticipating vocabulary or conversation uh, removing visual distractors um requesting the speaker to speak naturally requ uh, requesting for queuing of topic or turn taking the repair strategies uh, includes asking the speaker to repeat all a part of the uh, message and asking speaker to rephrase it and ask uh, speaker to speak loudly and slowly and uh, spelling the words uh, and li limited responses ask to follow up questions to either confirm the content of a previous message or to elaborate on it um, build up uh, conversation from known topics summarizing it seeking clarification writing the message these are used for a breakdown in communication takes place and they are generally used for a clarification of the message secondly unilateral hearing loss which refers to a significant and usually permanent hearing loss in one year um, and it its most common cause uh, is sudden deafness which results in um, single sided deafness rather than bilateral deafness so causes are uh, the single sided deafness may be a result of several different conditions each of which affects the ear differently causes of single sided deafness include physical damage to the ear compression of the hearing nerve inner ear problems including infections uh, tumors uh, disorders of the circulatory system severe meniere's disease trauma such as head injury 
and symptoms uh, patients with uh, single sided deafness often experience a number of disabling symptoms in addition to hearing loss these symptoms are primarily indicated in lifestyle or work situations and include some uh, symptoms of uh, single sided deafness are comparable with this, uh, bilateral deafness however many are not and impaired ability to ascertain the uh, direction of sound due to due to the head shadow effect impaired ability to hear from the direction of the deaf side uh, impaired ability to separate background noise from the um, sound so there are two common treatments for permanent single sided deafness uh, they are baha and a cross hearing aid uh, Baha uh, hearing aid uh, receives FDA clearance for the treatment of total uh, single-sided uh, deafness in 2002. It is it has also been cleared to treat single-sided deafness when patients cannot or for any reason will not use cross aid. Uh, and Baha is a semi-implantable uh, bone anchored hearing device. And Baha is a surgically implanted device. This is based on uh, direct bone conduction. Baha directly stimulates cochlea bypassing outer uh, and middle ear. The Baha consists of three parts, the external abutment and sound processor and titanium implant. The system works by enhancing natural bone transmission as a pathway for sound to travel to the inner ear, uh, bypassing the external ear and middle ear. And then the titanium implant is placed during a short surgical procedure and over time naturally integrates with the skull, bay, skull bone. And for hearing, the sound processor transmits sound vibrations through the external uh, abutment to the titanium implant. And the vibrating implant sets up vibrations within the skull and inner ear that finally stimulate the nerve fibers of the inner ear allowing hearing. So uh, a subtle difference in sound combined with the minimal time delay associated with transmission uh, gives the user the necessary temporal cues to help uh, determine from which side the sound originated. So the criteria for Baha is unilateral single sided deafness uh, and uh, the airborne gap should be uh, between 30 d, more than 30 db uh, and any individual with significant hearing loss in one year and normal or close to normal hearing in the year, other year may be suitable for a Baha. They must be able to clean the area around the abutment or have someone who is able to clean and maintain it for them and research has indicated an 80% satisfaction rate for Baha for single sided deafness and an increase in spatial discrimination of 5 to 15 db when wearing the Baha device. Another amplification option is the use of contralateral routing of signal. Uh, it's found that the cross system to be useful in quiet situations primarily when the signal originates on the side of the uh, impaired ear. However, the cross amplifications may be detrimental in the classroom uh, because signal is introduced to the normal hearing ear through the microphone and the impaired side. Uh, for this reason, the cross should not be considered for young children who may not be able to monitor the effectiveness of the system. In bicross hearing aids, if the better ear has uh, hearing loss and the client is likely to benefit from amplification no matter which side of the head uh, the mounted signal is coming from, the only way to pick a clearer signal is to have a microphone mounted into each ear and if each of these microphones is connected to the same amplifier and uh, receiver, the result is called a bi bicross uh, hearing aids. Uh, thus, people with hearing loss uh, in uh, better ear um, can be treated with bicross. Both the sides will have mic and the sound is perceived only in the uh, side with receiver. Transcranial cross, a different approach in providing amplification to single-sided deafness patients has been advocated by several authors and these authors suggest placing a conventional high gain or high output air conduction um, IT or VT hearing aid in the impaired ear to take advantage of the fact that the cochlea for uh, each ear uh, which are contained within the temporal bones are not um, acoustically isolated. 
So if air conduction signal of high intensity is presented to the cochlea of an impaired ear, the signal will eventually be heard in the cochlea of uh, the better ear, which is called as crossover and intraoral attenuation between the cochlea uh, will be will overcome the acoustic isolation. So because the signal picked up by a microphone placed in the uh, impaired ear is transferred to the cochlea of the better ear through the cranial structures uh, of the temporal bone. The authors refer to this type of fitting as a transcranial uh, cross. So other uh, uh, other treatment is cochlear implant. Cochlear implantation for unilateral deafness with and without the ear tinnitus has been studied uh, and the result is the uh, regular wearer of the speech processor found uh, beneficial in improving their ability to hear particularly in noise and decrease in tinnitus perception and improvement in sound localization uh, as reported. FM technology, the benefit of uh, FM technology uh, in children with unilateral hearing loss has been well documented and because children with unilateral hearing loss experience greater difficulty in background noise and increase in signal to noise ratio is clearly an advantage of the FM technology. So if a child already has a hearing aid and the FM receiver may be coupled to the hearing aid, another option is to place the FM receiver on the normal hearing ear uh, through an ear level uh, IFM system, a particularly useful option if the impaired ear has a severe or profound loss. So every child has different needs and the selection of FM system will be um, uh, decided by the child's educa uh, educational audiologist or the teacher of the hearing impaired who may have pertinent information about the class setting, acoustics and use of FM with other students. So uh, the parental education uh, when child is identified with unilateral hearing loss it is important to provide parents with information to which they can refer and information should include uh, the types of difficulties a child with unilateral hearing loss may experience and difficulty with localization, expected speech and language and auditory milestones, strategies to help their uh, child at home. So it is also equally important to educate the child's teacher including daycare or preschool teachers about the child's potential difficulties and helpful classroom strategies and avoid placing the child in open classrooms where the poor acoustics and reverberations will affect the child's ability to understand the instructions. Child has to be uh, seated front desk and the uh, classroom should be flooring and ceiling should be perfect so that the reverberations will be avoided and lay up perfect lightning uh, everything has to be monitored so again the co communication strategies is very important and speech reading uh, where the gestures and facial expressions and speakers mouth are involved while communicating and uh, Communication strategies address issues um, related to conversational techniques, repair strategies, assertiveness training, interpersonal skills and coping strategies are, um, have been implemented. And the, these are two main types, anticipatory strategies and repair strategies, where it has been already discussed where the anticipatory strategies, revealing your problem, selecting appropriate seating, as I already discussed, adequate lightning, avoiding noisy environment and anticipating vocabulary, uh, removing visual distractors and requesting the speaker to speak naturally, requesting for queuing, topping, uh, topic or turn taking. And in repair strategies, ask the speaker to speak loudly and slow, slower, ask the speaker to repeat and rephrase it and follow up the questions to confirm and, and elaborate on a previous message content and limit responses, build up the conversation from known topics, summarizing, seeking clarification, writing the message. In fluctuating hearing loss, um, it is frequently changes in severity over time and occurs in one or both years. Fluctuating hearing loss is typically a symptom of conductive hearing loss caused by ear infection and uh, uh, middle ear fluid, but it also presents in other conditions such as Meniere's disease. Causes are such as accumulation of fluid behind the eardrum, ear infections, earwax, autoimmune ear diseases. 
वेस्टिबुलर अक्विडक्ट सिंड्रोम और मिनियर्स डिजीज ऑल्टर इन यूरोपति सो प्रॉब्लम फेस्ड बाय चिल्ड्रेन आर एक्सेसिव क्राइंग इन स्मॉल चिल्ड्रेन ड्यू टू pain and irritable and refuses to feed and difficulty hearing in large or noisy classrooms and difficulty comprehending and following oral directions uh, difficulty localizing sounds and voices with hearing loss in only one year difficulty hearing the difference between similar sounds or words under the management the probable reason for fluctuating hearing loss in children have been attributed to otitis media with effusion and otitis media with effusion is mainly a disease of childhood the most common symptom is ear ache due to a condition known as blue ear uh, in which the walls of the middle ear secretes excess mucus which thickens and mechanically blocks the eustachian tube uh, causing excessive pain since the pressure in the middle ear is not uh, maintained on otoscopic examination uh, this, uh, there can be a slight retraction or a reddish color tympanic membrane in the affected ear the child may also suffer from eustachian tube dysfunction the major reason for uh, uh, otitis media effusion is recurrent cold or bacterial or viral infections and causes an infection that can affect the middle ear and hamper the eustachian tubes this results in the effusion and the circulation of fluid in the uh, middle ear the management is done mainly using antibiotics to control the infection or fever the course of antibiotics has to follow completely to uh, suppress the infection suppress the infection uh, or fever and also to reduce the pain uh, so that and the regular screening in schools to monitor hearing and language delays uh, as an important uh, Uh, part of early identification of fluctuating hearing loss in children uh, once hearing loss is identified medical management is the key and medical management very depends on the cause of fluctuating hearing loss um, uh, the possible educational needs educators must know if there is a hearing problem and should make sure uh, information presented in class is understood they should be uh, taught how to uh, advocate for themselves learning how to ask for repetition favorable seating that includes good visualization uh, of the teacher's face and being close to the uh, teacher um, and verbal instruction should be brief and uh, simple to assist with comprehension Uh, and we may benefit from a personal fm system in some cases amplification through hearing aids or use of assistive listening devices is necessary and we benefit from a personal or sound field uh, fm system depending on the degree of hearing loss and if the classroom is noisy or if medical management is delayed Meniere's disease is the most probable cause of fluctuating hearing loss in adults and Meniere's disease is a disorder of the inner ear that can affect hearing and balance to a varying degree it is characterized by episodes of vertigo low pitch tinnitus and hearing loss the hearing loss is fluctuating alternating between ears for some time then becomes permanent with no uh, return to normal function the symptoms of meniere's are variable uh, not all sufferers experience the same symptoms however so called classic meniere's uh, is considered to have the following four symptoms which is rotational vertigo fluctuating progressive unilateral or bilateral hearing loss unilateral or bilateral tinnitus and fullness or pressure in the uh, one or both ears Uh, management several environmental and dietary changes are thought to reduce the frequency or severity of symptom outbreaks low salt diet high salt intake is thought to alter the concentrations of fluid in the inner ear and meniere's episodes could be accelerated by high salt uh, binges and recommended salt intake is often around 1 to 2 grams per day and additionally patients may be advised to avoid alcohol caffeine and tobacco all of which can aggravate uh, simple of uh, meniere's a multitude of medicines can be considered to help patients the anti herpes virus drug uh, acyclovir uh, has been uh, used with some success to treat meniere's disease the likelihood of the effectiveness of the treatment was found to decrease with increasing duration of the disease probably because viral suppression does not reverse the damage it was considered possible that long term treatment with acyclovir would be required to uh, produce an appropriate effect on symptoms 
surgery and non destructive surgeries include those which do not actively remove any functionality but rather aim to improve the way the ear works and intratympanic steroid treatments involve injecting steroids into the middle ear in order to reduce inflammation and alter inner ear circulation if symptoms do not improve with typical treatment more permanent health surgery is considered unfortunately because the inner ear deals with both balance and the hearing and few surgeries guarantee no hearing loss endolymphatic sac de uh, decompression uh, surgery to decompress the endolymphatic sac has shown to be effective for temporary relief from symptoms most put patients see a decrease in vertigo occurrence this treatment however does not address the long term course of vertigo in meniere's disease and may require repeated surgery conversely destructive surgeries are irreversible and involve removing the entire functionality of most if not uh, all of the affected ear labyrinthectomy uh, the inner ear itself can be surgically removed via labyrinthectomy although hearing is always completely lost in the affected ear with this operation uh, vestibular neurectomy in more serious cases surgeons can cut the nerve to the balance portion of the inner ear in a vestibular uh, neurectomy alternatively a chemical uh, labyrinthectomy in which a drug such as gentamicin uh, that kills the vestibular uh, apparatus is injected into the middle ear can accomplish the uh, same results while retaining uh, hearing so finally we will move on to progressive hearing loss Uh, progressive hearing loss occurs when a person's hearing levels deteriorate or worsens gradually over time there may be an underlying pathology that may have uh, triggered a progressive loss or it may have been caused due to natural changes in the body such as aging causes are such as cytomegalovirus infection in children mutation of connexin 26 uh, gene usher syndrome cholesteatoma presbycusis autotoxic drugs and long term noise exposure so in the management uh, prevention of cytomegalovirus can be achieved through vaccines such as uh, vaclovir and gancyclovir in case of a child uh, who has developed cytomegalovirus the management is based on the symptoms hearing loss can be managed using hearing aids fm systems or cochlear implants in in case of progressive loss the hearing aid should have increased number of features that can be activate as the hearing loss progresses in the child Several researchers have stated that cochlear implants greatly benefit children with cytomegalovirus infection and FM systems or other group amplification systems can be used in case of classroom setup for better communication between teachers and students. Uh, presbycusis is the loss of hearing that gradually occurs in most individuals as they grow older it is estimated that 40 to 50% of people 75 and older have hearing loss and the loss associated with presbycusis is usually greater for high pitched sounds and most commonly it arises from the changes in the inner ear of a person as he or she ages and presbycusis can also result from changes in the middle ear or from uh, complex changes along the nerve path pathways leading to the brain so individuals with presbycusis usually have difficulty listening to soft sounds and have trouble communicating in noisy environments and high frequency sounds such as search uh, uh, certain sounds uh, seem annoying or um, overly loud antinatus uh, also occurs and presbycusis most often occurs in both ears affecting them equally and because the process of loss is gradual people who have presbycusis may not realize that their hearing is diminishing Uh, so the management uh, is the hearing aids are recommended such uh, for such patients which can be programmed based on the type of loss and individuals with a high frequency loss would re uh, require hearing aids such as uh, with uh, receiver in the canal or hearing aids with multi channel hearing aids which would emphasize certain frequencies while reducing the gain of others in case of no benefit from your hearing aids the client can go for cochlear implants which can be beneficial for the patient and the management is basically to help the individual with presbycusis uh, communicate better so communication tips can also be used for these patients such as 
face the person who has a hearing loss be sure that lighting is in front of you when you speak during conversations turn off the radio or television avoid speaking while chewing food or covering your mouth uh, with your hands speak loudly speak at your normal rate and do not exaggerate sounds uh, clue the person with hearing loss about the topic rephrase your statement into shorter simple uh, simpler sentences and choose seats or conversation areas away from crowded or noisy areas in restaurants and social gatherings conversations areas away from um, in no or noisy in areas slightly louder than normal but don't shout shouting may distort your speech the autotoxic drugs autotoxicity is a damage to the ear especially uh, uh, specifically the cochlea or auditory nerve and sometimes the vestibular uh, systems uh, by toxin and it is commonly medications induced autotoxic drugs include antibiotics such as aminoglycoside gentamicin loop diuretics such as furosemide and platinum based chemotherapy agents such as uh, cisplatin a number of non steroidal uh, anti inflammatory metry drugs have also been uh, shown to the auto, uh, shown to be autotoxic this can result in a sensory neural hearing loss disequilibrium or both either may be reversible and temporary or irreversible and permanent frequent problems faced by individuals with autotoxicity are mild hearing loss uh, presence of tinnitus balance problems of silopsia and initially only high frequencies may be affected and then the drug is continued other frequencies also may be affected so the management options uh, there are two types reversible and irreversible uh, hearing loss reversible hearing loss can be withdrawn by uh, using uh, uh, taking specific drugs and non reversible hearing loss the amplification devices such as headphone systems can all can help uh, reduce background noise hearing aids can be provided by an audiologist and sometimes the hearing loss is so severe that the most powerful hearing aids can't amplify uh, the sound enough so then we can recommend the uh, cochlear implant uh, to the, uh, to, the, uh, to those patients in case of balance problems balance therapy with a physical or vestibular therapist can be undertaken therapy may include training exercises that help strengthen balance skills and coordination The cholesteatoma is a destructive and expanding growth consisting of keratinizing squamous epithelium in the middle ear and or mastoid process. Uh, there are two types of uh, cholesteatoma congenital and acquired. Uh, acquired cholesteatomas which are more common can be caused by pathological alteration of the eardrum leading to the accumulation of keratin within the middle ear. Less commonly the disease may be a developmental abnormality when it grows from birth behind the eardrum uh, in the form of a keratin filled uh, cyst. So sim uh, symptoms of cholesteatoma contains ear discharge hearing loss other less common symptoms of cholesteatoma, cholesteatoma includes pain balance disruptions tinnitus ear ache and headaches and bleeding from the ear facial nerve weakness and balance symptoms in the presence of cholesteatoma raises the possibility that cholesteatoma is eroding the balance organs which form part part of the inner ear so the treatment uh, like once the diagnosis of cholesteatoma is made in patient who can tolerate a general anesthetic the standard treatment is to surgically remove the uh, disease general aims of treatment the ch challenge of uh, cholesteatoma surgery is to permanently remove the cholesteatoma while retaining or reconstructing the normal functions of the structures housed within the temporal bone the general objective of cholesteatoma surgery has two parts uh, the need to fully remove or uh, progressive disease like cholesteatoma is the surgeon's first priority preservation of hearing is secondary to this primary aim So noise induced hearing loss uh, can also be a progressive hearing loss uh, due to noise exposure uh, over a, uh, a period of several years and initial losses may be in confined to the high frequency regions however prolonged exposure may lead to other frequencies also being affected so noise induced hearing loss can also cause permanent and temporary uh, threshold shifts and prolonged exposure um, not only affects the uh, hairs of the cochlea but also can affect the inner hairs and auditory nerve fibers uh, and permanent uh, threshold shifts are more uh, damaging and thus the damage cannot be uh, reversible 
the problems faced by individuals with uh, noise induced hearing loss are usually in early stages the loss is confined to frequencies outside the critical speech band and the speech discrimination score is generally not affected um, communication may slightly uh, unintelligible, unintelligible under difficult situations however as loss extends to speech frequencies communication becomes severely affected Uh, the management programs for people with uh, no noise induced hearing loss uh, is counseling and the use of uh, hearing aids and uh, fm systems uh, with proper amplification and counseling the prognosis is uh, excellent for people with noise induced hearing loss the prognosis has improved with the recent advancements in digital hearing aid technology such as uh, directional microphones open fit hearing aids and more advanced algorithms annual audiological evaluations are recommended to monitor any changes in the patients uh, hearing aid and hearing and to modify hearing aid prescriptions so there is evidence that hearing loss can be minimized by taking mega doses of uh, magnesium for a few days starting as soon as possible after exposure to loud uh, noise a magnesium high diet also seems to be helpful as a noise induced hearing loss preventative if taken in advance of exposure uh, to lo loud noises there are currently no medical options for noise induced hearing loss from noise exposure and however the current research is ongoing for the possible use of drug and uh, genetic therapies uh, to cure noise induced hearing loss communication strategies and use of uh, ear protection devices so these are the uh, references thank you for joining the webinar